Hi, welcome to Ghostman Radio Station, and tonight my guest is Donald. I'll get his name right there. Al- Allison, who has written many books, been a journalist, a new- newspaper man, paranormal investigator, you name it, he's probably done it. So Donald, Donald's going to tell me a little bit about himself before we talk about. I met more ghosts at Kettensburg. It's strange, isn't it? Um, how we look into the world of the paranormal, although we, lots of people don't want to believe in the spirit world, in one way, but they would like to believe in the spirit world in another way. It's a bit of a conundrum. Now, obviously, you, you're one of your main subjects is Kettensburg. I mean, I know most people know their history, but could you tell us a little bit about the history of Kettensburg? Do you think this may be one of the reasons behind the phenomena of finding weird events and ghostly sightings there because of all the association with all the deaths? Could you give us some samples, if you don't mind, please? Um, certainly. I kept having very strange things happen in the area of the Alabama Monument. It's where the Brigade of Alabama Confederate troops, Southern troops, um, attacked the south end of the Union line. Um, my grandson took pictures of uh, anomalies, actually orbs shooting into a central area, and then a large multicolored um, area of light arose. Um, cameras would not 
function properly by cameras that would work fine everywhere else on the battlefield. And um, that led me to research and find out that I had ancestors who fought at that very spot including a great-great-grandfather and a great-great-great-uncle who were on Little Round Top fighting against the 20th Maine, the 15th Alabama. Um, my most incredible sight at that spot, I was with a medium friend, and we started seeing figures, semi-transparent human figures, at a distance walking. They were walking toward us. They kept walking toward us. Uh, before it was over, <clears throat> excuse me, we had about two dozen or more figures. They were not speaking to us. They were interacting with us. They were clearly wearing uniforms of the Confederate Army. They did not have guns, but they clearly had the Confederate uniforms. One of them was only about two feet. Uh, my medium friend was getting messages saying one of them was actually connected with me, and his name was Sam. I've not been able to find a connection, but that was an amazing experience. My medium friend finally was getting very uncomfortable as they were gathering around us, so we left the area. Yeah, do, do other, I imagine it's very populated by obviously um, visitors to go and see the, the actual battlefield obviously because the history element with schools and colleges and that. Does that sometimes interfere with any paranormal um, investigations or are they very respectful of it? Um, it very much interferes. There are times that the little round top area at the southern end of the field is just basically swarms of people um, the experiences I've had is, are at night when it, people are not around very much. That's when I'm able to to experience things. The park is open in the summers until 10 p.m. Um, so that is makes it easier. However, you have to be very careful investigating because the U.S. National Park Service does not allow certain paranormal equipment on the field, they will confiscate it. I can imagine that's because of um, safety reasons or something like that, I don't know. Yeah, they, they, I've actually had one person that I know told that they consider the spirits to be protected by the Park Service. It could be possible, I mean, there is a lot of, um, as you said before, we come on air, there is the native Indian um, connection to Gettysburg as well. Yes, and uh, there are um, the stories, older accounts of, of people experiencing paranormal uh, paranormal encounters there on the field around Devil's Den at the Jumble of Rocks. And the legends have it that the Native Americans fought a battle in that area much, much earlier. Mm. I know there's a lot of, um, as you know from a parent on the world yourself, there's a lot of connection to that. If you build anything on a Indian burial ground, there's a lot of paranormal activity as well. I wonder if it, there is that connection to Gettysburg that there may be, obviously, Native Indians buried there somewhere that they that might not have been found yet. That is a distinct possibility. Actually, my own house is built on a sand ridge in the Great Black Swamp. There's ample evidence of Native American presence here, and it's possible that that um, has a tie to my own house as well. Have you had many paranormal experiences in your own house?
different people with no connection. They have described the same little girl. She appears to be from about the 1870s or 1880s. We have not seen her, but I have seen the apparition of a young woman. I fell asleep in my living room watching TV. I woke up at 2 in the morning to find a young woman bending over watching me sleep. Uh, It startled me. I sat up. And at this point, I was wide awake. No, I was not dreaming. She was dressed in what would be uh, late 1800s clothing. She straightened up, smiled at me, real as could be, brown, kind of frizzy hair. She turned around and started walking away and then vanished. I imagine you did a lot of historical research for your book and other books that you've done. Do you find it easy to find? Because I imagine some records may be difficult to get hold of. Um, <clears throat> as far as uh, northern records, they kept a very complete record of the Civil War, and we've been able to find um, incredible detail. Southern records are a little more problematic because some of those were destroyed uh, when Richmond Capitol and the Confederacy burned at the end of the of the war. Some records were moved and lost, and so it is kind of very sporadic in the Confederate records. Yeah, it's a shame that I think. Yeah, because I suppose also it's like the like everything in it. It's like when the winning side always says it from their side, but but you never hear about the losing side. You know that's typical of any war. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I think it's very interesting. Obviously, uh, you've done other paranormal stuff. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, sure. I've researched a variety, um, investigated a variety of places. There's a very active um, granary here in my hometown that's been the subject of a number of television shows. I have, have uh, been interviewed as a historian and paranormal researcher in regards to that property. Um, we have friends who purchased one of the historic farms outside of Gettysburg that was a Confederate field hospital. Um, that property is incredibly active. I've done a lot of investigating there. There's actually the ghost of what we believe to be a, uh, a young black boy, maybe 10, 12 years old, perhaps camp servant to Confederate officers who were treated there. Um, his name is Jackson, and using a spirit box, I've spoke to him numerous times. He even asks for me um, when I'm not there and they're doing investigations. Do you find also, obviously, because of the, um, how shall I word it without offending anybody, because of the difficulties between the, the, the North and the South because of the right to not have slaves do you sometimes find it may be a clash there sometimes of ideals um yes i think that was the the actual cause of the war um and i think there may be animosity among the spirits it seems i heard a electronic voice phenomena of an investigation at a union field hospital Again, they're using a, a ghost box, a spirit box, and they told the Union soldiers there, the soldiers were communicating with them, that, you know, that the North won the war. The North won, and, and these spirits were cheering. They, they were not aware. So in their, in their existence, they, they were not aware that the war was over. Yes, true. My own, my own house was an underground railroad site. Underground uh, railroad was a system to help escape slaves into Canada and freedom. And my own house was used actually as a place to hide runaway slaves on their way north. Wow. Cool. <laughs> You've definitely got a lot of history concerning your own house. Uh, 
Um, what was I uh, yeah, uh, obviously, obviously um, in the paranormal world, do you think that more people are looking into the paranormal world now and more believe it than they did before, or do you still think there's a lot of skepticism? of Americans by one poll uh, believe in some form of the paranormal be it uh, be it ghosts be it uh, you know cryptids like uh, Bigfoot or, or be it UFOs but even ghosts um, nearly 50% of Americans in some polls say they believe in and have or have seen and experienced a ghost yeah it's strange uh, well and uh, obviously, would I mean you obviously know the UK has got a bit more history per se as America that we that we know of American history, obviously, because it was a lot of pre foreign foreigners going over there taking over most of America from the native Indians. I mean, obviously we've got the native Indian history, but a lot of that is oral, not written down, which is a shame. And have you studied that as well, or been allowed to study it? Um, to some degree, um, one of the books that I've edited that uh, my publishing house published uh, was an archaeological study here in Williams County. It was uh, focused on the early settlement of the area, and, uh, and then a, a second dig focused on the Underground Railroad. But the Native American aspects of that, the archaeologists who conducted the study, um, looked into the artifacts and uh, and researched them and the information available. I found that entirely fascinating. I mean, uh, on our own property, we have found uh, Native American artifacts dating back to about 10,000 B.C. Which to me is fascinating. Well, I, 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 and I, I think that's what people forget. We tend to think that. Well, we're a bit ignorant sometimes when it comes to history. <laughs> yeah, we I, I didn't think it goes back so far, but I mean, I, I, I know for a fact I think there has been found a, like Stonehenge, Henge kind of like buildings, even in even in, in America, like not quite the same, but there are sort of those kind of monuments there. What else have you got um, done, Don, Don, that you would uh, like to mention? Um, well, you, you had mentioned uh, I've got two books out on the paranormal. I met a ghost at Gettysburg, um, Journalist Journey into the Paranormal, follow-up book. I met more ghosts at Gettysburg, a journalist paranormal journey continues. I never even intended to write on the that I do after the first book had opened incredible doors for me. Um, so I, I'm doing follow-up. I had a very interesting paranormal experience at the site uh, where the 107th Ohio Regiment fought on the second day at Gettysburg. Um, very uh, disturbing and mental images of what happened there. I looked into it, found out it was a regiment of German immigrants who were badly treated. So I'm doing a, a follow-up book, sort of a blend of history and paranormal on the 107th Ohio Infantry. I'm also I'm looking into uh, information on on just some of the other paranormal aspects, such as near-death experience, after-death communication, you know, instrumental transcommunication. 
combination of, like the ghost boxes and just doing kind of an overall, you know, hey, this is the evidence of, of, of life outside of, of our physical bodies, a continuation of human consciousness, if you will. Yeah, I, I, I think the paranormal is very much real and I th sometimes think, I like the theory that I've, I think you've heard this theory, that it's like a playback sometimes, that our brain is tuned into like a playback, like a, like a video, you know, we're, we're like, uh, watching something, that event that happened. with a lot of um, railway sightings when it was the old railways there's a lot of um, railway ghost stories in there the old railway stations theory I mean I might be talking out of the back of my whatever <laughs> but I've got a theory that you know these old films that we that we see like with John Wayne in and all these other old actors well a lot of them were filmed the old way weren't they with magnetic tape and I wonder if sometimes there may be a residue of not like of the people that were actually in the film like like a residue of the ghost not the, like a complete ghost, but like a residue of them, you know, their essence almost, almost captured. Yeah, I, I think there is something to that. I mean, some of the quantum theory, um, quantum, um, you know, physics theories are absolutely, you know, incredible where, you know, the loops and the, um, well, just the fact that all of our existence really boils down to energy and vibrations and the fact that um, you can sort of overlap time um, with the way things work and that could account for a lot where you where there is a haunting where you experience something that does not seem to experience you Have you read anything else other than your books in the pipeline? Uh, 
featured in a documentary that came out this last April called The Ghosts of Gettysburg by Dockside Media. So I've been very working very much in the paranormal field. I also do some work as a historical interpreter and researcher um, at a local living history museum. Well, I, I like that kind of thing. So you're putting back in the, what you've learned. You put back in what you've learnt. Yeah, it's it is it's great to be able to contribute, and really, it's a way to bring history alive to the general public. And people respond well to that. I very much enjoy it. Today, I will be an 1830s um, settler just entering the Great Black Swamp. Will be the presentation I'll be giving. I'll be in the clothing of the period. It's a, imagine, it's a trouble is, when we think of American history, I, I'm afraid to say this, and I, I know you're going to hate this, but the trouble is we think of the World West films, you know, and the, pioneer, and the pioneers, and the, we have this romantic image in our head, all, all, all due to the films on telly. Obviously, it wasn't a romantic era. It was very hard living, and you had to be very tough to live there. But that's the trouble. We have, like... Probably Americans have this romantic view of England sometimes. Yeah, I think it's without, and I've never been to England. I would love to. That is on my bucket list of life to travel to Europe. I have a lot of English, Irish, Scottish ancestry, and some some French and German. Quite a quite a mixture, and I'd love to visit those countries where my ancestors came from. Because I don't think we can truly understand a culture without visiting and experiencing it firsthand. I quite agree with you there. Now, is there anything, would you like to mention your books or website where anybody can find out where to uh, look you up, my friend? Sure. Um, actually, my wife and I uh, operate Faded Banner Publications, a small publishing house that produced my books and others. The website for Faded Banner is very simple, www.fadedbanner, like an old flag, .com. My paranormal books, I have a separate website. It's called uh, imetaghost.com, www.imetaghost.com. And all our books and products can be purchased at the website. And much is available on Amazon and other, you know, uh, online. But like, like, like we always say, it's always nice to get it from the author. It, it, you get you you get a bit a, a bigger slice of the pie, it will say. Yeah, it's a much bigger slice. Plus, it's just nice uh, interacting with customers. Too. Yes, it, it, I think it, they, they. I think hopefully after people listen to this podcast, they go, oh, I think that's fast. I am always fascinated by anything to do with history because we're history as we live it now very very true as a newspaper man uh, I always like to say and I didn't originate this saying but I was doing the first draft of history very and true I love researching old newspapers to go back to, to earlier times yes yeah, so I, I think that's that's key that, I think that's what I like about doing research I like to do bits of research about things. And if I can try to find as much as possible, it's hard, some things. But as long as I've tried to find it out, and if someone comes along and says, oh, that's a load of rubbish, I just go, fine. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm always a, I'm a curious person. That's where the newspaper work was well suited for me. It just got the deadlines were a little tough as I got older, so I retired from that early to work more at my own pace, but very curious. I think they always say, once a journalist, always a journalist. I think there's a lot of truth to that. I still still um, do a little bit of work in that area. Uh, look, I'll, look, I'll, I'll definitely uh, recommend people to go to your websites, and uh, definitely re recommend that uh, people obviously buy your books. And I shall look it up, and I shall try. I might try to do a review one of your books, one day. Probably not yet, because I'm a bit busy at the moment, <laughs> as, as we always. Are. I understand. <laughs> but thank you for coming on the show, Don. I do really appreciate it, your time and effort, 
as people don't realise there is a massive time delay. In the UK, it's coming up to midday dinner time, and Don is probably coming up to breakfast time. Yes, I, I usually get up about 6 a.m., and what is going on 7 a.m. now, I believe. So, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for breakfast. I've got my coffee here, so that helps. Ah, that's it. You can't beat a good American without a cup of coffee. <laughs> Ah, that's okay. Well, thank you for talking to me, uh, Don. I, um, as I say, uh, uh, I really appreciate your time and effort, and uh, that you've the fact you've been on my show, and that 